Welcome, everyone. It's good to be with you again for our table talk. This week, we're with Pastor Sam, and we're diving into Acts chapter 8, the first 25 verses. So, Pastor Sam, I appreciated your message. <laughs> You've got the four big points, yeah. the first of which is persecution. Yeah. That's a heavy thing, mm -hmm. and yet you point out that good things come out of it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you say a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, no one likes to go through trials, problems, as particularly persecution, and even we looked at 1 Peter 4 where Peter says, don't think it's strange, like, don't be shocked that this happens because this is part of our, our walk. But one of the beautiful things in, in Scripture and in the way God works is there's a purpose and that God produces through everything we go through. And if we trust in God's love and promises that he will work it out for his purpose, his glory. And so we see in Acts as we see persecution kind of expel the Christians out. As Pastor John shared last week, it was like the dandelion that just kind of the seeds blew and would now spread. And so uh, similarly, that, that's what God is trying to do. And sometimes he has to allow things, as they say, uh, for the, the eagle to fly out, has to make the nest a little ruffle to, to fly it. And so sometimes God stirs us. Sometimes God allows things to happen to move us because we get complacent or comfortable mm -hmm. and we like what we like. And then suddenly something happens that finally moves. But ultimately, if we trust God, keep a good attitude and and, and realize the purpose of what God is doing, um, there's something good that usually comes out of it. You know, God is not there to hurt or harm us, as we know in Scripture, but He has thoughts of peace right. to give us right. an expected end. Right. Right? And so that's, that's, that's a good thing that came out, especially we read in the text uh, sure. for the Christians. And as we shared, it's not only just the apostles, it was just the ordinary Christians like you and me that, that were empowered by the gifts that we often talk about and were utilizing as they traveled and as they they went out. So. so there's that progression. Mm -hmm. And Philip becomes a great example yeah. of, of how God worked through that progression. Yeah. Uh, as you think back, what are the highlights about Philip you want us to remember? Yeah, I mean, as we mentioned, you know, he utilized his, his gifts, right? He was just, you know, one of the deacons there that uh, we read of the seven, and he was just sent out through the persecution and was sharing the gospel. Um, but as we marked, he was, he was faithful. He, he, was, he didn't go and hide. He could have gone and found another city and found another place and hid there because of the persecution. But he actually, knowing the persecution was resulting from the gospel, he went out and still continued the gospel to new territory. As we saw the progression, he, he could have gone somewhere else safer. He actually went to what were considered outcasts or enemies, even to the Jews, the Samaritans. And so now he went to a region and, and proclaimed the gospel. So Philip was a, a courageous man, a man that was using the gifts and who really saw God's greater purpose uh, for the, the church. Okay. And so the, the progression is happening, and yet uh, the, they bump into weird things. Mm -hmm. This magician, Simon, yeah, comes along. Yeah, <laughs> pretty weird guy. And, and so what are the important points there? Yeah, I mean, as we looked at, there, there is a, there's a poison. We see this kind of... Uh, this pattern, this trend from the time of Judas, and even before that, like you look through the ministry of Jesus, there was a time when Mary poured the, the oil on Jesus' feet and some of the disciples said, oh, this could be sold for money. So you see this kind of pattern where the interplay between money and ministry uh, and purposes of God come in. So Judas and then Ananias and Sapphira and now Simon. And we see that poison, right? It's not money itself. It's not having things that God, you know, we have money and God blesses us with it to use it, praise God. But it's what that poison does. It's that illusion of money giving us protection and power and prestige that we drive after can hinder the actual work of God corporately, but even in our lives. Like if we become very selfish because of that poison, then we're not going to be generous in giving kind words to others. We're not going to be generous with our time. We're not going to be generous with our lives. We, we be, become very selfish. And so God wants to deal with that selfishness in our hearts, that, that feeling of this is mine. And God wants us to just learn to, to give, to freely, generously, because he's given to all of us. You know, I shared my own experience and, and story. Like, you know, there's a time in my life I had nothing, like literally nothing. Didn't have a bank account, <laughs> didn't have anything. And, and so I know that everything that I have is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I can freely give. And it was actually the kindness of so many people, like random people uh, that some of them I didn't even know who, who was supporting and helping me. And then this beautiful couple who opened their homes uh, to me. And so we should just consider who can we be generous to and mm -hmm. who can we be kind? It, financially, yes, 
Uh, maybe it's just being kind with our words, spending time, someone in the hospital, someone who's sick or in need, just that generosity should flow. But we have to always be careful. See, money is that indicative sign of selfishness, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the problem. Money is not the problem. It's that it, it just it's, it helps us to see if we're really selfish. And so when we can give to, the, to God uh, through our tithing, we can give generously to fund other mission projects and works, and even just a random, I challenge everyone, I hope you are able to this week, just buy a coffee for someone when you're, uh, or pay forward to the person behind you on a, on a drive through Just try that and see what it elicits, that joy uh, as we become generous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, okay. That, and that whole spirit of gratefulness just mm -hmm. helps us just to and be propels generous. us forward. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So it propels us forward and, and we begin to think, okay, what about, mm -hmm. what are my opportunities? How do you navigate that personally? Well, that's where we talked about proclamation and kind of reaching, reaching out. And, you know, we talked about the, the Coke uh, analogy and how, you know, more people know about this than about Jesus. And so as we uh, consider that and we think about that, just lodging that very thought that more people know about a drink than about Jesus should spur us to think about uh, the new people, right? We, we look at scripture, especially in Acts, the four, first four people that the writer actually acknowledges are the most weird or people that you don't want to, you don't want to meet an oppressor. You don't want to meet a terrorist. You don't want to meet uh, an astrologer. You don't want to meet someone who is doing all these crazy things and you're risking your life. But that's who the Luke writes about. He could have found some nice, pious, person who accepted Jesus and now followed him and was very kind and helpful. No, he found these really extreme cases to show that the gospel has the power to change anyone's life. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're here today and you're watching this and you're thinking, wow, I, I've done a lot of stuff in my life. Mm -hmm. God still loves you and God's power can transform our lives. And that's why he, we highlight these stories, is these extreme cases. because that. And, but then also God is challenging us to go to the people that we're maybe uncomfortable with. Maybe that person at office, at our office, our workplace, we're like, I see them every day, but I you know, don't know them. They're acting a little weird. Mm -hmm. Why don't go and have a conversation with them? Have a coffee with them. Sit mm -hmm. down and have lunch with them mm -hmm. and, and share the gospel and realize maybe they just need a kind word. And so that proclamation, that sharing, that being a bridge builder, mm -hmm. right? Being mm -hmm. a bridge builder is very, very important because very often we like to isolate and just be in our little corner and 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 this is where the gifts of God, especially those who've been given the gift of evangelism or the gifts of help and generosity and faith, utilize those gifts to to reach out to to people. Okay, wow. So there's there's a lot of opportunity for us, and you've challenged us mm -hmm. to really pray that through mm -hmm. and to try and seize our opportunities. Yep. And uh, we hope that as you're meeting in your groups that. All of these thoughts will encourage you to have a good discussion around them and to dig deep so that you too can uh, be like Philip and go forth and, and be your best for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you.